Greetings, unsettled souls. <laughs> Welcome to the correct news. This is Sam I meet again. She doing now political commentary for the media speaks. Welcoming everyone to the show. If you haven't checked out the uh, work that Christelle and I did at the Trump rally, please uh, definitely make sure that you go ahead and do that. It's uh, listed on the site. We have media passes and everything for that. So. Uh, <laughs> Went off very, very, very well, and uh, the show is going to go off very well, hopefully, uh, all things considered. Circa.com. FBI officials were already on a terror alert before the Manhattan explosion. Now, this is interesting because there are two ways to look at this, and I'm going to go to screen share so that you guys can see this video while I'm, I'm commenting here. There's a couple reasons, uh, there's a couple ways couple things I should say that this could be. Uh, first of all, just general preparedness. I mean, on one hand, if you're going to have the FBI, then they have to be there for something, do they not? They have to have some purpose. So, I mean, it would stand to reason that if they've gotten some leaks or some information concerning a possible bombing, then maybe it's a good idea to go ahead and stay on alert and keep people, uh, keep people that are working at the FBI perfectly aware of what's going on so that when things happen like this they're not completely taken out of the blue maybe there wasn't enough information to tell people the other side of it is that there is a lot of information that could lead us to wonder uh if 9 11 was definitely a false flag or not um i've sort of been won over to the fact that it has quite some time ago so when you look at it through through those facts and facts is what they are it stands out to at least question it, and that's what we're going to do today. Um, alert issued Friday. <clears throat> Several intelligence sources in the FBI confirmed an alert was issued Friday. FBI spokesman Kelly J. Langmasser from New York field office, it says, uh, said the alert was in response to the United Nations General Assembly meeting taking place this week in New York City. In other words, they're saying that the two uh, were not tied together. But it was also, uh, if you read on, due to increasing chatter, which of course is uh, ISIS talk. Langmasser gave no details about the incident or the devices discovered in New York City's Chelsea neighborhood, saying it was an ongoing inf investigation and that information would be made available as the investigation develops. Sources tell Circa.com that a combination of increasing chatter online along with impending UN meeting in New York had government officials concerned with possible attacks. And there you go. There is most likely where the truth is. They had some information <clears throat> that they either didn't feel comfortable sharing with the, the public or just hid from the public. We don't have enough facts as far as I know to guess which one of the two it was. But it definitely coincided, I think, with both of them happening at once. That makes sense to me. Um, heightened security at the United Nations. It's the fact that the bomber or bombers remain on the loose has the UN nations. Now, while well, he's not on the loose, so that, that's, been, uh, that's been already dried up. But let's look at it this way, friends. Let's take a real good look at the information we have here. And let's walk away with at least this. <clears throat> if your area, if you find out that your area is on alert, or if you find out that your area is doing a test, by all means, be alert. Be vigilant and stay away from the area where the test is because many times that test <clears throat> coincidentally ends up being real. And um, the attention span of the average American isn't long enough, I fear, to in most in instances catch it. Uh, moving on, guys. This is brought to you by uh, the Seacrest Motel that you're seeing right there. Hollow Weekend this is coming at Cedar Point. So you're going to want to go to the Cedar Point. You're going to want to go to the Seacrest Motel when you stay to get a good price on the room. Let them know you heard about it from the correct views and watch how much you save. Truth or revolt? This says LOL. Gary Johnson excluded from the debate. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do it without the LOL. I'm not happy about it. And Gary failed. <laughs> Or at least is in the process of failing. And here are my thoughts on it. I was a huge Gary Johnson supporter last time. Um, somebody got to him, or he thinks he can get more by pandering um, to leftists, considering that Donald pretty much has the, uh, the right tied up. So 
Gary supports the TPP. He supports NAFTA. He supports illegal immigration. He believes in the hoax that is man-made global warming. Gary has let the libertarian movement down in ways that we would have never imagined. I mean, let's face it. <clears throat> it's the party that I come from. And it was very difficult for me to get behind Trump because of Rand and uh, Johnson. Well, when Rand was no longer running, when he had Rand all that he could, and uh, when Johnson emerged as a ridiculous leftist, it made me supporting Trump rather easy. So you might be asking, <clears throat> why would you not be happy that Gary isn't in? And I'll tell you why, because I think the what we're trying to accomplish here, the whole reason that I'm speaking into a camera, for instance, is because we know that this is a lot bigger than this election. And having a third party up on that stage is good for the country. And I would be saying that even if it was Stein, who is even worse than Johnson. Stein would bankrupt us faster than Johnson. Or not Johnson, uh, excuse me, um, Sanders, if that's possible. I mean, the woman is economic suicide, but getting a third voice up there would break the two-party monopoly, and that's much more important than Trump or Hillary. It's, it's a lot bigger. <clears throat> so what am I saying? I'm saying if somebody calls you on the phone, lie. Yes, I'm saying lie. Tell them you're voting for Johnson even if you're not. Try to get him up to 15% by the next polls just so that there can be another voice in this because it's going to matter down the road. And that's why I'm rooting against – I'm rooting for Trump but rooting for the idea of a third party being heard. Having said that, the Libertarian Party has been a massive letdown. But it says, of course, Libertarian candidate Gary Johnson won't be pulling a Ross Perot this election season, as he is officially excluded from the upcoming presidential debate, according to the Nonpartisan Commission on Presidential Debates, which, of course, is uh, they are partisan. There's only one party in this country, and <clears throat> they are the left and right side of the same party. Though Johnson has been a part of the election season since late 2015, he has failed to garner the 15% necessary to participate in the debates, presidential debates, clocking in at only 8.4%. And uh, you left us before you laughed too hard. Uh, Green Party, Jill Stein, is at 3.2%. Now, the reason this matters is... She's been at three percent since God created the sun. I mean, like she has not moved. People just she's she has no traction at all. The debate commission largely remains nonpartisan, but Johnson maintains they are a tool for the major parties. They are a tool for the major parties. He's absolutely right in that. And again, what we've seen here is that uh, the commission is a private organization. It says created thirty years ago by the Republican and Democratic parties for the clear purpose of taking control of the only nationally televised debates the voters will see. And that is true. There are some of the third party debates on CNN, but America is largely too stupid to watch them. 62% of the people have wanted to see Gary Johnson in it. So I mean, though he's been a huge letdown, I personally am not happy about this. Just, just putting it out there, friends. Uh, getting away from the whole Republican-Democrat thing for a while, uh, this is Daily Mail. I was sent a video of my wife having sex. Ashley Madison members and their heartbroken spouses reveal the devastating impact from last year's hack upon their lives. Now, we don't blame the hacker for this here. Let me tell you what Ashley Madison was. And regular viewers know we've been covering this for a moment now. Ashley Madison is a site where cheaters went for the sole purpose of cheating hiding it from their spouse, trying to get a little on the side, and basically betraying, utterly betraying the person that they're with. Um, I've said a million times that I have not always lived the most sexually moral life in the, in the ever, but any, any uh, adult play that I may have been part of <clears throat> has never been behind anyone's back. Uh, so don't don't paint me as the picture of morality because your paintbrush is going to be off. But whatever you do, don't think of me as a cheater because that's never been the case. It, it sickens me. And we're going to take a look at what some of this does uh, to people in real life. 
It said in the Trump in the summer of 2015, a hacking team released the details of 35 million members of the adulterous dating site Ashley Madison in one of the biggest data breaches that have ever been ever seen. Well, 35 million cheaters. How does that make you feel about the person you're in a relationship with? The result was what divorce lawyers were calling a Christmas in September. Of course they were. After she, after the leaks saw hundreds of relationships torn apart, the hack even led to several reports of suicide of members on the sites <clears throat> who struggled to face life after their exposure. Well, you know what? You can only be so sorry about it because if you're cheating on someone, you're risking their life. Yeah, you might use protection. It sometimes fails. A large percentage of people don't. I would argue if you cheat on somebody and you don't use protection, then you are by by very definition, risking their health, risking their life. Who knows what you're going to get? So, I mean, the fact that these people off themselves, it's a, it's a shame whenever someone dies, but you can see, you know, they didn't care about anybody else. It said, uh, now after a year of the controversial site was in, after a year after the controversial site, I should say, was infiltrated by impact hackers, a Channel 4 documentary has met the victims of the exposure, both customers of the site and their cheating partners. Tasman Smythe, an unmarried marketing consultant from Virginia, was one of the 35 million members seeking to have an affair on the dating site. What a piece of scum. The site, which promises discreet relationships, that is, we won't tell anybody what a scumbag you are, <clears throat> is dedicated to people already in committed relationships or marriage. In other words, <clears throat> it's targeted to make you want to cheat. And it said it's uh, for... It attracted... Tamsin scum after she had spent her whole day shunning her whole life shunning traditional relationships in favor of affairs she says it was definitely geared towards the afternoon delight of a quick hookup yeah just cheat on the person you're with they'll never find out she said initially men were very hesitant to make the first move when we start talking, what they want to find out, are you real? Do you really live in the U.S., et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> then once you start talking, and inevitably, men have this sensational desire to send you dick pictures. Sometimes it's even the first picture. You don't even know what their face looks like. Well, I, all right, let's face it. If you're going to play and you're going to be silly, you can't identify, and can't identify somebody by their wang, usually. Unless, of course, it's Anthony Weiner and it's everywhere. But uh, other than that... Um, I, I see why that is. I'm, I'm not justifying it, but that makes sense. Um, last July, all the details of the men and women using the controversial site were threatened to be released by Impact. The hackers gave a avid media 30 days to close down the site. They're Ashley Madison and established men, or they would release the information. When the scum CEO, Noel Bitterman, they refused to close the site after a 30-day period, the 30 million users were released. And uh, Tenzman recalls the day she found out I was in a meeting and all of a sudden my phone was dancing off the table. I'm trying to concentrate. Oh, you poor bitch. And I'm looking over and I'm seeing the names of business associates, business clients, friends of mine, people I met on Ashley Madison contacting me and my heart sank. After the names of the committed men she had been courting were released, Tenzman says she was even contact, uh, contacted by their partners. And she added, I had met and talked with quite a few of the gentlemen. Their wives were just decimated and hurt, and they wanted to talk. Yeah, they were decimated by you. Um, this is amazing. After the release of the emails, details, it came to light that the white hat hackers who infiltrate large sites in order to warn of their security weaknesses have tried to encourage avid media to increase their security. Friends, look at this. I mean, right here are cheaters blaming the hackers. It's insane. Absolutely. And we, we live in a world where you can be a swinger or you can have any relationship you want. But this, why would you get with somebody just to cheat on them? Or maybe you used to swing and you don't do that anymore. And you've agreed that you're not going to. So what happens? This happens. It's, it's supposed to be perfectly okay. You blame the hacker. It's nauseating, friends. Absolutely nauseating. I want to remind everybody that you can get these really cool stickers that I have here as I go into, you know what I'm going into, I'm going into the one and only donkey of the day. As I do, friends, let me remind you, you don't want to miss the dunk of the day, dunk of the day, I should say today, because it's 
are quite comfy indeed. These are cool, awesome. Look at these must own bumper stickers. Five dollars get you one, seven dollars get you both. Uh, PayPal, the correct views at hotmail.com. Repeat. Five dollars get you one. Seven dollars get you both. At the correct views at hotmail.com, guys. Just go ahead and pay pal. This is brought to you by Sticker Junkie. You're looking at Sticker Junkie when you check out. Let them know you heard about it on the correct views, and you'll get a discount. Clown Facebook post <clears throat> warnings put more Alabama schools on lockdown. What kind of sissified, babyfied, mamby pamby, whiny, crybaby, useless human beings? Do we have in America today when clowns can put something on lockdown? For one thing, I, I don't care who I offend here. If you're afraid of clowns, you are a whiner. You are a baby whiner looking for attention. Grow the hell up. There is nothing frightening about a clown. The only reason it was frightening was because it would appear places and had weapons and used to have big teeth. There is nothing frightening about a clown. The only reason anybody would be weirded out by a clown is because you can't tell really who it is. If that's the case, then you'd be afraid of every mask you've ever seen. This is ridiculous. This is our country. Two more Alabama schools. This happened twice before. We're on lockdown today after the social media post and phoned in a threat warned the clowns might show up at two Birmingham area schools. Who gives a right ass? You arrest them if they're bothering anybody. If they're not bothering anybody, then you leave the clown right where it is. It's not illegal to be a clown. Just ask Hillary. Irondale police officer James Lewis, a school resource officer, said a student reported to police that a Facebook post hinted... <gasps> It's the possibility of clowns showing up on campus at Shades Valley High School. Shades Valley's principal should have said, who gives a damn? Take your ass to class. Who cares if a clown shows up? What the hell is wrong with you? Birmingham police said Holy Family Crisco Re High School and Ernest Erner Ensley received a call that a clown was coming to the school to lure children into the woods. Well... If they're in school, there aren't going to be any children to lure into the woods. So tell them to ignore the damn clown and get into class. I, friends, I can't even do it anymore. I'm going to start to swear. There is nothing frightening about clowns. Who gives a rat's ass if a clown is coming to your school? Do you realize we have kids that cannot read and write, and we're shutting down schools because a clown might show up? I'm nauseated, friends. I'm freaking nauseated. If you're listening to The Correct Views, uh, do me a favor. You can donate at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com. You can also donate at Patreon. And you can look at Patreon. It's, it's beneath me there. And uh, it's on the description, I should say. And the reason I'm asking is because this show, as you can see, owns very little gear. Uh, I don't have a camera. I don't have a mic that doesn't suck. It became a problem when I was at the... Uh, outside the Trump rally. The media pass was fine for inside the Trump rally. But outside, we simply need better gear, friends. And this is listener supported. So if you like what I do, if you like the fact that I come out here and I call it like it is and I don't hold back and I don't care what anybody thinks and I need you to help fund me. Because even though I might not care what you think, without your support, no one's going to listen to me talk about thinking it. Good night, friends. God bless.